For all those whose cares have been our concern, the work goes on, the cause endures, the hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. My husband called health care the cause of his life. And I think it was something that was deep within him. He talked about the illnesses in his own family, and certainly I think that was part of the drive. But it was something that was much deeper than that. He saw suffering, as he said about his own brother, Robert Kennedy, and he tried to heal it. He felt that in the United States of America, we should continue to move forward and try to heal suffering. An early believer that investment in biotechnology would help accomplish this goal, Senator Kennedy's vision would lay the foundation for this exciting new technology to succeed. It's why the biotechnology community and the patients he cared about had no greater champion. When he looked at his own areas of responsibility, he became a passionate supporter of biomedical research and an ardent supporter of a nascent new industry, biotechnology, because he saw that as a path to the future. Senator Kennedy's leadership in the life sciences and the biotech industry specifically was immensely important, both to that industry and to the progress of the whole, and really into medical progress as a whole. Senator Kennedy felt very deeply about the potential uh, of medical progress, medical research, and of the biotech industry to improve people's lives. And he recognized very early uh, the importance of, of biotechnology as one of the signal advances and opportunities for the 20th and the 21st century. And that began, as you know, with um, his work to make sure that recombinant DNA research would not be crippled by inappropriate regulation. Senator Kennedy was one of the first members of Congress to really understand the science. But Equally as important is he understood that the public policy that surrounds the science is critical. The Orphan Drug Act that facilitated the development of drugs to treat rare diseases. FDA user fee laws that created a special niche for biotech companies. And accelerated drug approval for life-threatening diseases. All examples of Senator Kennedy's leadership. The Modernization Act, 1997, I believe uh, it was, um, uh, for the first time took into account the need uh, to uh, prioritize, the need to allow certain things to happen uh, faster because of the positive impact they could have uh, in terms of treating patients. Uh, the Senator was very successful, all of us were successful in making sure that people understood that certain things in cancer care or HIV and so on really uh, need to be looked at uh, in a specific way, in a way that advances uh, the approval process um, without endangering uh, the safety of the public uh, in a way that patients get early access. Uh, it was a great breakthrough. The Senator's appreciation for um, uh, the importance of an innovation environment in Washington was critical for lots of small biotech companies like ours um, that are really at the forefront of developing new medicines and are years away from being profitable. So we have to rely on investors who obviously um, can have faith that if we're successful in what we do, they can ultimately see a return. Further recognizing biotechnology's increasing role in improving the human condition, Senator Kennedy worked tirelessly to increase funds for research, including a doubling of funding for the National Institutes of Health. Senator Kennedy was really interested in the National Institute of Health and the research that was being done there and recognized that more could be done if they had more money and insisted that there be a doubling. He's, he's a very passionate person and his passion carried over to helping to sell ideas like doubling the, doubling the funds. And uh, that, was, that was a masterful thing that was done and he was able to sell that and get people on the other side to sell it and it became a possibility. Seeing the need to make sure America's seniors could afford these new treatments, Senator Kennedy teamed up with Republican Majority Leader Bill Frist for passage of a drug prescription component for Medicare recipients. 
The fascinating thing about the prescription drug bill, the Medicare Modernization Act, uh, is that it would not have passed without the participation day in, day out by Senator Kennedy with his conviction that the most important part of health care being in large part prescription drugs had been denied seniors. His end game was basically to say, no, we've got to have affordable access to prescription drugs. And therefore, in meeting after meeting, working with the majority leader of the United States Senate, working with other representatives from the other party, we passed a bill which today is going to have an impact to probably over 100 million people over the next 30 years. Of course, reaching across the aisle to pass milestone legislation was nothing new to Senator Kennedy. Over a period of three decades, liberal Democrat Ted Kennedy and conservative Republican Senator Orrin Hatch formed a legendary and effective team. Their work resulted in such landmark policies as the Prescription Drug User Fee Act, the Ryan White Comprehensive AIDS Act, and the Children's Health Insurance Program. Without that kind, of part, that kind of partisanship coming together, in large part out of mutual respect of ideas, the Senate would not function as a body in many ways. What it demonstrated to me at least is that sort of dialogue, that intimacy, that specialness of working together and even in a social way can have a huge impact on ultimate policy that's developed. Senator Kennedy used to joke that if he and Senator Hatch were on a, on a bill, it meant that one of them hadn't read it. But that really wasn't true. I mean, it, what, it, what it really meant was that each bill that they worked together on represented a real compromise between Senator Hatch's conservative approach to issues, Senator Kennedy's liberal approach to issues, but agreement on trying to find a way to reach a common goal that would benefit people. In the latter years of his life, Senator Kennedy continued his support for the advancement of biomedical research. Although it meant opposing key leaders of his own party, he endorsed a full 12 years of data exclusivity for innovative drugs, therapies, and vaccines. His support was crucial to its passage. One of the, the most important kinds of biotechnology medicines are what we call biologics. They're these complicated proteins. They're really the, the future of, of healthcare. And in order to succeed in developing these, we needed 12 years of data exclusivity. And we knew it. Um, but we knew we had a lot of opposition. The AARP was against it. The President of the United States was against it. Leaders in uh, the Democratic Party in Congress were against it. But Sen Senator Kennedy understood it. He understood the importance of it to our success, and he understood that if we don't succeed in making these new products, we weren't going to cure uh, some of the worst diseases in the world. From how physicians treat diseases to the development of breakthrough drugs, therapeutics, and vaccines, Senator Kennedy's enduring cause to improve the health of patients with breakthrough medical innovation will be felt for generations to come. Research requires long-term commitment. His life is an example of long-term commitment. Then you couple that long-term commitment, showing people the path to their future with trying to improve their lives in the present and to never forget that every day you can help make somebody's life better. But in the long run, you also have to enable society to have the tools uh, that it needs. He thought we should be on the cutting edge of progress, that we should continue to move forward. He loved to describe this country as being in a march for progress. And he believed that biotechnology was a key part of the march for progress. He said, how many times he said that the 21st century was the century of the life sciences. He saw the life sciences as really the new frontier, as the place where we were going to make cutting edge developments in this century. And he didn't just want to see those cutting edge developments, he wanted to see them applied and used to heal patients and to really make better the life of the world. The hope rises again and the dream lives on.